People who think that they want to be preachers, they ought to become real familiar with that particular story. And the reason for that is just because God doesn't strike down liars and abusers of the word right there in the pulpit, it doesn't mean he isn't going to judge that. You got to be careful what you say when it's your turn to speak. God has very little tolerance for some of the people that abuse their position. 29th chapter. These are the, this is the letter that is sent to the captives. We actually have the text. And then I'll share something that's really kind of interesting. Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive. Hmm. Where did they get carried away? Babylon. Well, who was one of the elders? Daniel. Daniel receive this letter. Listen to what it says. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive, to the priests, to the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. This happened after uh, Jeconiah, the king, the queen, Queen Mother, the eunuchs, the princes, Daniel was one of them, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the, crafts, the craftsmen and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elsai, the son of uh, Sapphire, uh, the Jimari, the son of Hilkiah, which we never hear of again in the scripture, which is a good thing. I have trouble, trouble enough pronouncing their names just right here. Whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Who did they say caused them to be carried away? You know, just because something uncomfortable comes to you in your life does not mean it's not from God. It may very well be from God. He has a purpose in it. Oftentimes, he's shaping us and he's molding us. Changing our heart. So don't curse the bad thing that happens to you. What you want to do is you want to say, God, I'm in your hand. Just show me what you want me to do in this circumstance. And if it's agree together with the trouble, I will. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there and not diminish. <coughs> And seek peace of the city where you have, where you have caught, where I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray, <coughs> pray to the Lord for it, for it is peace, you, uh, for its peace, you will have peace. What is he saying? This false prophet has told the people, no. Everything's coming back. It's all going to be all right. You don't have to worry. 
Jeremiah now sends a letter to everybody that's, that's in Ezekiel's country. Jeremiah and Ezekiel are contemporaries. He sends the letter that they might know, remember our study in Ezekiel? That Jeremiah and Ezekiel were saying the same thing. Ezekiel saying it in Babylon, Jeremiah saying it in Judah. But it comes to one other guy. It comes to Daniel. And that becomes very significant. He's telling the people there is not going to be a rescue. Get involved in Babylon. Get used to it. You're going to be there. Just because God sends you someplace you don't want to go does not mean it is not His will. Just because something has happened in your circumstances that you really hate does not mean that that was not God's will. Our emotional response to whatever circumstance we find ourselves in is not a test for God's will. So Jeremiah tells him, you better settle in, get a job, build a house, get married, have kids. Oh, oh, and to give you an indication how long you're going to be there, get husbands and wives for your kids. You're staying a while. And when it comes to integrating into Babylonian society, you pray for whatever city they send you to. And you be involved. <clears throat> you let them see what it is really to be a Jew. Don't just sit there and grumble about the situation you're in. Lean into it. You'd think there was a message in there for us, wouldn't you? For thus says the Lord of hosts, 8th verse, <coughs> The God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreams. Don't come up with this supernatural mumbo jumbo. Listen to, listen to what God is telling you. Not about how you feel. A uh, lady that I, I really appreciated, Sister Pat Runhog, she used to say this. Feelings come and feelings go, but feelings are deceiving. I'll put my trust in the Word of God for nothing else is worth believing. Nothing. Goes on. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst there were false prophets on both sides of the border. In Judah, telling them everything's coming back and you're going to be okay. <clears throat> In Babylon, false prophets who were opposing Ezekiel and telling the people, hey, in two years, we're all going back. Don't get settled in. Resist the government in any way you can. We need to stick to ourselves, not integrate. Don't build a house. Don't get involved in a business <coughs> because you're not going to be there here that long. Who are the diviners and the prophets who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord. <coughs> now, listen to this and think about who is reading this letter. For, for thus says the Lord. After 70 years are complete at Babylon. I will visit you and perform my good towards you and cause you to return to this place. Do you remember our study in Daniel? Daniel, the ninth chapter. 
Daniel 9 says that Daniel was reading the books. In Daniel 9 it says, I, Daniel, understood by the books of the number of years whereby the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. That's where Daniel got his 77s. This is where Daniel came to know that they were getting close to the time. You see, when Jeremiah sent this letter, he was an old man. And Daniel was a young man. <clears throat> but he had been elevated to the position of the first minister, prime minister, if you will, under the king himself in Babylon. <clears throat> and when he read the letter, do you remember what Daniel immediately did? Daniel immediately immediately began to fast and pray. And when he began to fast and pray, things began to move. He was actually reading the scripture because he was in the scripture regularly. He began to fast and pray. And do you know how much the devil hated that? How fearful he was of that. Think about this. <clears throat> he caused sorcerers and the king's advisors whom he had saved. He saved their necks by being able to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Nebuchadnezzar was going to kill all the advisors. To include Daniel. And he saves them by not only telling him the interpretation of his dream but telling him his dream. Now that was God. They concocted the entire idea of setting up an old, uh, uh, a statue. And that statue was to be worshipped and reverenced. No matter what. And no one was allowed during a period of time to pray to any other God but Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel prayed anyway because Daniel knew there was power in that prayer. And friends, I'm telling you something. There is not a born-again believer in this room that does not have access to the same power. How does it come? As you search the scriptures like the Bereans, not letting it gather dust on the shelf, and God begins to point things out to you. How many here, you've had that happen? You've gotten in the word and something just jumped out and grabbed your heart. It grabbed your heart. <clears throat> when that happens, and for I've never met a believer who is sincere about reading the word that that has not happened to. When that happens, that's God's signal to you to begin to seek his face in prayer and maybe push away from the table for a meal or two. God's done that because he wants to do something in you, with you, for you. And in order to do that, he's got to do something in your heart. And that's the mechanism of change. For I know the thoughts, oh, back up one. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and because you and cause you to return to this place. For I know your thoughts that I, th for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Do you ever feel like things were going wrong in your life because God was mad at you? Seriously. Oh, I failed God and now he's smacking me around. That's not what this says. 
This says if God has to take you to the woodshed, you cooperate and bend over his knee. You don't make him do it. Why? Because his thoughts are to love you and bring peace. His thoughts are to set things straight, to make your relationship with him sure. You know, the entire scripture is an instruction manual. He created us and then provided a manual for us so that we would know how we were designed to operate. And when we don't follow those instructions, it brings trouble. It brings trouble. And God's mechanism to correct that is to have a people who spend time in the instruction manual so they can see what the problem is and make corrections so that the problems don't interfere with their relationship with the Creator. Amen? He goes on. Then you will call on me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And then Daniel began to pray. It was because of Jeremiah's letter. And you will call on me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Do you ever feel like God's not hearing you? Maybe it's because you're, re you're resisting what he's trying to do in your life, and instead of surrendering to him, and say, God, you're just, and you've chosen this situation in my life at this time, and I am going to praise you and believe that my life is in your hands and that your thoughts to me are merciful and your thoughts to me are for peace and for my good. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And friends, we're all called.